Welcome to today's episode of Mentors at Your Benchside. I'm Adam Paulson, and today we're going to cover ethanol precipitation of DNA and RNA and how it works. Ethanol precipitation is a commonly used technique for concentrating and desalting nucleic acid preparations in an aqueous solution. The basic procedure is that salt and ethanol are added to the aqueous solution, which forces the precipitation of nucleic acids out of the solution. After precipitation, the nucleic acids can then be separated from the rest of the solution by centrifugation. The pellet is then washed in cold 70% ethanol. After a further centrifugation step, the ethanol is removed and the nucleic acid pellet is allowed to dry before resuspending in a clean aqueous buffer. So how does this work? First, we need to know why nucleic acids are soluble in water. Water is a polar molecule. It has a partial negative charge near the oxygen atom due to the unshared pairs of electrons and a partial positive charge near the hydrogen atoms. Because of these charges, polar molecules like DNA or RNA can interact electrostatically with the water molecules, allowing them to easily dissolve in water. Polar molecules can therefore be described as hydrophilic, and non-polar molecules, which can easily interact with water molecules, are hydrophobic. Nucleic acids are hydrophilic due to the negatively charged phosphate groups along the sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so back to the protocol. The role of salt in the protocol is to neutralize the charges on the sugar phosphate backbone. A commonly used salt is sodium acetate. In solution, sodium acetate breaks up into sodium and acetate ions. The positively charged sodium ions neutralize the negative charge of the phosphate groups in, on nucleic acids, making the molecule far less hydrophilic and therefore less soluble in water. What about the role of ethanol? The electrostatic attraction between the sodium ions in solution and the phosphate ions are dictated by Coulomb's law which is affected by the dielectric constant of the solution. There is a link to more information on Coulomb's law in the episode description. Water has a high dielectric constant, which makes it fairly difficult for the sodium and phosphate ions to come together. Ethanol, on the other hand, has a much lower dielectric constant, making it much easier for sodium to interact with phosphate. This shields its charge and makes the nucleic acid less hydrophilic, thus causing it to drop out of solution. And what about the temperature? Incubation of nucleic acid salt ethanol mixtures at low temperatures, for example minus 20 to minus 80 degrees C, is commonly cited as a necessary step in protocols. However, according to Maniartis et al.'s molecular cloning a laboratory manual, this is not required as nucleic acids concentrations as low as 20 nanograms per mole will precipitate between 0 and 4 degrees C. So incubation for 15 to 30 minutes on ice is sufficient. Then there's the wash step with 70% ethanol. This step is to wash any residual salt away from the pelleted DNA. Here are a few tips on ethanol precipitation. Firstly, consider the choice of salt. Use sodium acetate at a final concentration of 0.3 molar, pH 5.2, for routine DNA precipitation. Use sodium chloride at a final concentration of 0.2 molar for DNA samples containing SDS, since sodium chloride keeps SDS soluble in 70% ethanol so that it doesn't precipitate with DNA. Use lithium chloride at a final concentration of 0.8 molar for RNA. Since 2.5 to 3 volumes of ethanol are needed for RNA precipitation, and lithium chloride is more soluble in ethanol than sodium acetate, it will not precipitate. But beware, chloride ions will inhibit protein synthesis and DNA polymerase, so lithium chloride is no good for RNA preps for in vitro translation or reverse transcription. In these cases, use sodium acetate. Finally, use ammonium acetate at a final concentration of 2 molar for the removal of DNTPs, but do not use it for the precipitation of DNA for T4 polynucleotide kinase reactions, as ammonium ions inhibit the enzyme. To increase the yield in precipitations of low concentration or small nucleic acid pieces, such as those less than 100 nucleotides, Add magnesium chloride to a final concentration of 0.01 molar. 
increase the time of incubation on ice before centrifugation to one hour. This explanation should bring you up to speed on how ethanol precipitation works. If you want to learn more about the ins and outs of ethanol precipitation and other DNA cleanup approaches, you should check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources. And subscribe to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.